WhatsApp you guys welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video we've been through a two year pandemic we've stayed at home we've been through difficult crises of both mental as well as physical health and everything eventually has impacted the way we think the way we feel all of these thoughts can be super consuming and can make you really dysfunctional so i have a very special guest here today with us who will help us in this post pandemic life to get through life better so if you are interested to actually know real time solutions that can help you with your mental health issues then continue watching but if this is the first time you've come on to my channel then hi i'm sara i mean beauty and lifestyle content here on youtube take a moment hit that subscribe button join the sara squad i'm sure you'll have a great time here and also don't forget to hit the bell icon right next to it so that every time i upload a video you get notified and with that we can dive straight with this especially yes we have here today is sindura she is a counseling psychologist at icol she's done her masters in counseling psychology from tata institute of social sciences so let's welcome sindura together thanks so much sara for having me uh, and uh, i'm so thrilled to be here on your channel today uh, i actually really want to thank all of your viewers who spoke so openly with about your concerns your difficulties uh and i was very very tuned into the responses that uh, all of you made since the questions are very general uh we have taken the major topics of anxiety career relations and i want to speak more about that in today's video so since everything is more related to anxiety why don't we start with actually talking about what is anxiety anxiety that we experience on our day to day lives is something that all of us feel is hardly anybody who would who will okay. say that i've never been anxious right so it's a very very normal <laughs> it's a very very common emotion and experience that all of us have uh, basically it's the sense of restlessness some some unease also sometimes of fear that we have in response to certain situations certain thoughts certain memories some interactions that we may have with people all of these could be causes of anxiety right. which we find we which we perceive to be threatening for us we experience anxiety in different forms sometimes it shows up in our body like so many of you spoke about a uh, feeling shivers in your hands and legs uh, sweaty palms your heartbeat yeah. racing very very fast Physical right uh, so there's a lot of body related uh, forms in which anxiety shows up and similarly it also shows up in our thoughts like you know so many of you again spoke about overthinking uh, thoughts that just won't stop coming not being able to concentrate right so all of these are different forms or different ways in which anxiety shows itself why don't you help us with some ways that we can deal with anxiety if we can't seek professional help so as i said that anxiety shows up in different all these different forms right so we have to also deal with them differently each time it shows up so some of us we often feel anxious in the body some of us often feel anxious in our thoughts right so it's important to identify these different forms so that we can uh, understand different ways of uh, responding or dealing with it a lot of you talked about anxiety also as being this uh, you know sense of an intense panic attack at times at one moment where you like you know it's like you just have no thoughts you can't think anymore and you feel paralyzed yeah. almost right how do we deal with that now first right. and let's, un let's understand why does this even happen to us right so our brains are programmed to respond to threat whether it is a physical threat or emotional basically whether it's a wild animal standing in front of you or your exam timetable right our brain is going to perceive it as something very scary something very threatening so uh, our brains are programmed right. to uh, serve to help us survive in the wild right when we evolved right, uh, right. and therefore it releases all these hormones that you know gear us up and that's why we experience all these bodily changes when we feel anxious right so actually these physical right. reactions that we have are supposed to help us survive they are supposed to protect us we are we no longer live in the forest but our brain is somewhere still very very primal and that's why there is this conflict that happens there's there's a sense of being hyper vigilant when we get anxious is there a threat to my career is there a threat to my relationship there is a sense of hyper vigilance that anxiety brings with it okay now therefore uh, to work with the anxiety in the body we'll have to tell our brain that we are physically safe because the brain thinks we are in actual physical danger it doesn't understand that it's an emotional situation it's a psychological difficulty it feels that it's, it it responds as if it's actually a wild animal about to eat you up so we have to tell our bodies that you, we are physically safe right how do we do this 
Now there are some things called grounding exercises. These grounding exercises help us tell our brain that you are physically safe. You are not in danger right now in the present moment. Okay. Now I will give you some examples of grounding exercises. You can try this uh, by yourself. Okay. Uh, one is that you will have to sit on a chair. Okay. Just rest your back on the chair. Plant your feet firmly on the ground. Okay. And be in a very relaxed posture. You don't have to sit very, very straight. Just be relaxed, feel comfortable. Okay. Right? And as your feet are touching the ground, just focus on the sensation that where your feet are touching the ground. Okay. Just uh, focus on how the ground is able to support your feet. Yeah, the connection between your feet and the ground. You can also maybe notice the texture uh, of the ground. Is it smooth? Is, is it soft? Is there a rug that you put your feet on? Uh, also notice the temperature. Is it cold? Is it warm? Right? So those are the ways in which you can just connect to the ground beneath your feet. Okay? And at the same time, you can also maybe bring your focus a little to the back. Okay? How your back is feeling rested against the chair? You're feeling rested. Okay? Uh, is it straight? Is it, uh, you know, is it soft also? Is there a cushion that you are supported by? Right? So bring your feelings to the support that you're feeling on your back and on your feet. Okay. When you bring your attention to these sensations, it sends a message to the brain that you're okay, you are safe and that you are in the present moment. Okay. It really helps to bring this bodily anxiety. It helps us to calm down in that moment. Okay. Uh, now, this is something that you can do very, very slowly. I, I, For now, I've just explained it to you, but you can do it over a period of maybe Hi, 5 to 10 so minutes. Good. It did? So, so there's this second. second exercise also, which is another grounding exercise. It's called the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. okay? Uh, now, what do we do in this is that you can just, uh, 1 is 5. So, you have to look around the room and identify any five objects that you uh, see okay. around you. Okay, now you could attribute some, maybe a color, like maybe five yellow objects, or you can think of five round objects, something. Like basically you just have to identify five things that you can see around. Right, okay. okay. Then go to four sounds that you can hear in your room, okay. Uh, maybe it's the sound of the fan, the sound of the AC, and then three Three things that you feel on your skin, three textures, okay? maybe the clothes that you're wearing or the chair or the bed that you're sitting on, right? Or maybe the wind that's, that's blowing, three things that you can feel on your skin. Okay. Two things that you're able to smell, okay? Something that's cooking, uh, maybe a perfume that you're wearing and one taste that you can taste right now. If you're not eating anything in that moment, then just imagine a taste that you like. Okay, uh, so that's five, four, three, two, one. If you see uh, all these five uh, things that we asked you to imagine are actually all your senses. Okay, you're seeing, hearing, tasting right. uh, and all of that. Right. Now what happens is when we try to focus on the information coming into our senses, it brings our brain in the present moment. Okay, and when we are able to come to the present, our brain is able to understand, oh, I'm in the present and I'm, I'm safe. safe. There yeah. is no danger here. Yeah. That's another way of telling our brain that you are safe now. Right. And that we are in the present. Okay. We are not in some imagination where something is going wrong. Uh, now, this is when you are in the middle of anxiety. Okay. But also generally, overall, it's important to look after the needs of your body. Very, very basic needs, you know, at getting enough sleep, getting enough movement, whether it is through exercise, whether it is through gymming, whether it is through walking, yoga, dancing, whatever yes. form you choose, swimming, whatever it is. But some sort of movement, right? I think that has helped me the most to just, you know, keeping that move, one hour of physical movement, which is not work. Which is not just cooking or cleaning or doing Absolutely. something for the house or myself, but actually exactly. moving my body. Exactly. It helps so much. That is so true. That is so true. That's not just by the way. It doesn't have to be productive. Very rightly right. said, sir. Nutrition. Okay, very important not to skip meals. It this sounds very, very basic, but a lot of us actually, the kind of lifestyles that we lead, yeah. we just end up skipping meals or, you know, we don't eat right. So taking care of that and having this time for yourself, like I said, some quiet time for yourself 
and some time where you are feeling connected to somebody any close one anybody that you feel connected to yeah so ensure that these are at least getting met and these are thrown out of balance it can again make our body feel like we are not safe that something not everything is okay right if we are not able to do this that means kuch to theek nahi hai so don't count these activities as pampering or you know like something that you are doing right. or too much like am i just being too lenient with my These, this is this is very very this basic. is important okay, yeah it's basic also something else that also helps something that you can you don't have to take extra time for if that's what you're worried is just when you're doing your regular things like having tea having bath even brushing your teeth just be mindful no. of staying in that moment yeah. okay so for example uh, like i want to ask you What is the last time you brushed your teeth without thinking about something else? Never. I don't What remember. I, I don't remember the, next... the last time because when I brush my teeth, I'm like literally it's scrolling scrolling through my day. I'm like, okay, ये करना है, ये करना है, ये करना है. So all things are done. I can never be. This is like my biggest weak point wherein I cannot be in the moment ever. If I'm even if I'm like eating food, I'll be scrolling through Instagram. Or I'll be watching something and editing on one side, so it's like multiple tasks at one time. I have to work on this Same. for myself. Not just you, Sara. It's it's me. All of us, I think, all of us. Multitasking. Oh, right? uh, it's very natural for us. Yeah, multitasking and you know simple things like you know like the the like shower thoughts or shower thoughts because everybody thinks and over thinks <laughs> in the shower, right? Right. Uh, but uh, how many of us really take a shower or take a bath? Really mindful, just enjoying that specific moment. Okay? Very rare. Just focusing on the sensation, how the water feels on your skin. Okay, uh, is it a warm shower? Is it a cold shower? How does it feel? Is it relaxing? Right. So just focusing on that particular moment, Correct. even while having tea. Okay, what is the taste of the tea? What's the temperature like? Okay, now that we've dealt with anxiety, I think the next major thing that people had questions about were the ruminating thoughts in their head, thoughts that literally consume you. You're constantly dealing with your mind, uh, throwing new and new things across yourself. Yoga, this kind of yoga. Absolutely, this is so common, sir. I think uh, sometimes these worries and negative thoughts can be right. like Everyone. this annoying person who just doesn't shut up, and you know. they don't leave you alone almost uh, it right. becomes like a bully our own mind becomes like a bully it just uh, you know gives you bags and bags of uh, thoughts to just see her and take this and you know why don't you worry about this and there's so much that we all have to deal with and process and pay attention to so what do we do when these thoughts come to us typically we uh, we analyze it we uh, sometimes we defend them sometimes we try to make meaning of them sometimes we try to connect them with something else so all of that basically we give them a lot of importance okay but the whole idea is to understand okay. that uh, this is our mind's job okay the mind is doing its job of supplying you continuously with a stream of thoughts it is yeah. what it is supposed to do okay uh, and that these thoughts okay. are not yeah. facts okay just because your mind is making you worry about something does not mean that it is true or that it is going to happen okay so it's important to distinguish between a thought and something that is true being a fact basically why the mind is doing is because the mind is also trying to keep us safe okay just like our body it is erring on the side of caution and you know telling you to be cautious and you know worry about what was the worst that can happen rather than telling you that hey it's okay or everything is safe right so what you have to do is just accept these thoughts do not try to push them away do not try to stop them the more we fight them the more we uh, try to stop them the more we resist them the stronger they become and the more and more they start coming okay it's like watching clouds okay just imagine yourself uh, you know sitting somewhere really peaceful and like a nice garden or somewhere and you know just watching clouds pass by how do you watch clouds okay we usually see we simply see where they are going right uh we don't try to control the direction in which they are going we don't try to analyze what is the shape of the cloud we don't uh, worry about where they will go will they go this way or that way we don't we, we just simply sit and we observe and what do the clouds do they just come and they float by that's exactly what you need to do with your thoughts okay you just needs to observe as they come and they go okay we do not need to worry and engage and analyze and look at them as something that you have to deal with or wrestle with these are thoughts they will come they go they are doing their job 
ठीक है सो जस्ट थिंक ऑफ दीज थॉट्स एज क्लाउड्स दैट कम एंड गो ठीक है योर रोल इज टू सिट बैक एंड ऑब्जर्व राइट इन फैक्ट समाइम्स यू कैन इवन बी सार्कैस्टिक विथ योर माइंड एंड से ओह वट एल्स हैव यू गॉड एंड नो दैट्स अ गुड वन एंड यू नो यू गिव इन मी समथिंग रियली नाइस टू वेरी अबाउट एंड समाइम्स दैट ऑल्सो वर्क बिकॉज यू नीड टू क्रिएट दैट डिस्टेंस बिटवीन योर सेल्फ यू एंड दिस वरी ओके Uh, you are not your worry, right? Correct. Uh, now, th- of course, but also you can't watch clouds all day. Okay, we all have got jobs to do. We have uh, we have tight schedules. So uh, there's this <laughs> thing of of uh, you know there's this way of creating these worry appointments or worry periods. So choose a set time for yourself. Like maybe five five o'clock to five thirty. I have this worry period where I will really sit and completely allow myself to worry. Okay. Okay, yeah, bring it on. Okay, yeah, let all those bad thoughts come. I will worry about the worst that can happen to me, to my life, my career, my relationships, <laughs> and I will do that for thirty whole minutes. Oh my yeah, god! Okay, but that also Voice it is it is very good. Okay, but also what is uh, what is uh, helpful with this is that there is a limit for this. There is only a thirty minute appointment that you get with this worry period, and it means that the rest of your day. becomes a worry free zone okay so if there are any of these thoughts or these worries coming to you in the day you have to gently tell yourself hey you know what i have an appointment with you at 5 o'clock why don't i see you then and gently uh, you know put it aside okay the idea also is to not be harsh on yourself not be very very critical not be very tough on these thoughts the idea is to be gentle the idea is to be compassionate okay and even in the worry time sometimes it can it can become very difficult it can become scary and overwhelming okay it's not going to be a fun thing of course right so in that time you can try these grounding exercises that i told you before if you feel overwhelmed you try and ground yourself to so you feel calm and then maybe again come back to the worry if you feel ready otherwise you abort yes. the session it's just you right uh, so but but this but setting aside a separate time really helps so that You, your entire day is not overtaken by this mind doing its job okay Consumed the mind does its job but you have to do your job Correct. so you know so it, allow it what it wants to do but only it at a stipulated time and within a particular duration only so what about when these thoughts get so consuming that and you know it gives us a feeling of helplessness because i think saying that we can have that one hour worry period is one thing but sometimes we get so dysfunctional with our thoughts कि वो वरी पीरियड एनालाइज करने जितना भी मतलब दिमाग नहीं चलता लाइक पूरा दिन यू आर ओनली थिंकिंग ऑफ दोज थॉट्स एंड यू फील वेरी हेल्पलेस सो हाउ कैन वी नेविगेट थ्रू दैट सो फर्स्ट लाइक आई सेड ट्राई द क्लाउड ऑब्जर्वेशन मेथड बट बियॉन्ड दैट देयर इज अनदर वे आल्सो टू डील विद योर वरीज इज व्हेन यू कैन एक्चुअली टेक चार्ज एंड राइट गो लुकिंग फॉर एविडेंस ओके सो गेट इनटू दिस डिटेक्टिव मोड बिगिन एन इन्वेस्टिगेशन uh and really start to look for evidence of what it is that your mind is telling you this is what is going to happen this is what's true start asking it for evidence okay so when feeling anxious what happens is we tend to make the situation or we tend to perceive the situation to be more dangerous or more harmful or more negative than it actually is our brain tends to do that it makes it look more negative more darker so try to uh, you know use reason use evidence right. use logic to point out this to yourself okay for example uh, sometimes we do this black and white all or none thinking okay so uh, if i don't do this assignment perfectly i am a total failure okay again look for evidence is that true if you don't do this assignment perfectly does that make you a complete failure no i'm sure not you've done so many other things so well this one assignment doesn't make you a failure okay or uh, no. if i lose yeah. this relationship that means i will be lonely right. forever yeah uh, not necessary yeah you are likely to find somebody else or you will find happiness you will find peace this one relationship cannot mean everything right uh sometimes what okay. we do is we uh just uh focus on the negatives too much right, right. for example uh, how come i got this one question wrong and you know i knew that was wrong and you know i still just stick to this option i should have picked that other one and we just focus on everything that we did wrong we don't look at the things that we did right okay also another way that we do this is we discount the good things that we did we make it seem like it was not so important what we actually achieved for example 
oh that presentation went really uh, well but you know what i think i was just lucky that you know the professors were really lenient that day uh, you know and that's why they didn't give me uh, many uh, negative comments something <laughs> like that uh, sometimes uh, we also expect only the worst case scenarios to happen like like for example if i fail this exam then everybody is going to hate me forever right we just think of the worst that can happen hmm? so reminding yourself that these are not true these thoughts don't have evidence they don't have reason they don't have logic they're coming from a place of fear so sit with these thoughts and look for evidence the next genre of question is mostly about how all of these thoughts and anxiety has now affected their careers or uh, causes lack of motivation so because of all of these excessive thoughts we are not able to control our daily life and uh, focus on the things that actually need to get done so how can we tackle that and regain our motivation it's important that you get in touch with your right. feelings about this right uh when there are very difficult emotions that we are facing it can become very hard to concentrate uh and also when we are feeling anxious we tend to procrastinate it's one of the ways of dealing with anxiety uh so identify what it is that you are feeling okay uh, sometimes you also don't start something because you feel that we uh, unless we are able to do it perfectly we cannot start okay so just tell yourself it's okay to even do a bad or yeah. a rough start but at least to start okay but that's another thing i was talking about also just staying with feelings and trying to understand them okay whatever you feel i think it's important to tell yourself that it's okay to feel whatever you feel okay feelings are never right or wrong okay feelings are just feelings they are valid they are justified in whatever form that they are okay well and and try to also label and identify and recognize these feelings you know uh the anger whether it's shame it's sadness this guilt this loneliness or whatever it is as fear okay so it's very important to get these emotion words these names for emotions and try and identify and label your feelings what you're feeling in that moment okay we urge you to allow yourself to also feel these feelings okay sometimes we sometimes we hear people saying how do i control my anger okay the point is not to control your anger the point is to allow yourself to feel anger what you can control is how you express your feelings okay now just like uh, feelings need to be heard and recognized and understood they also have the need to be expressed okay so once you recognize your feelings it's also important that you express your feelings okay example it's okay to cry it's absolutely okay to cry it's absolutely okay to call a friend and just vent out your frustration it's okay to journal it's okay to draw paint find whatever ways that you want to express your feelings but it's important to express i can be imperfect i am good enough i have strengths i have resources Correct. okay so it's important that you remind yourself of these small uh, self affirmative statements it's also due to the lockdown actually that a lot of our academic career plans have gone completely haywire right and uh, don't even itself, talk about it right exactly and you know all and not just academic and career in fact relationships like everything Gender has life. been turned upside down yeah it's like you can't ha- make any plans whatsoever right uh and exactly uh, this, you don't know what will happen tomorrow we don't know the future is so uncertain the present times are so uncertain this can again bring on so much anxiety for those of us who are maybe you know preparing for some competitive exams people who want to those of you who want to go abroad and study right who are awaiting results it can, this all can feel so so anxiety provoking right uh in such times it's very helpful to plan in the short run if we are not able to control our long term future just plan your week plan your day okay set very very small achievable goals okay and even if you can't achieve these small goals just don't be very very hard on yourself because we are all going through this traumatic pandemic uh, it's not an easy thing to deal with at all right so just start by planning right. things which are very small which you can foresee immediately in your future maybe one month maybe one week however small it is but it will give you a sense of control it will give you a sense of purpose 
Correct. Okay, it will give you the motivation to start something. Because when we when we tend to plan, we tend to procrastinate. What happens is that we think of these huge, lofty goals, and then they seem so big and unattainable. Right. It completely brings our energy down. So break your goals into smaller steps that you can start right away, which is a very small step. Something that at the end of the day you can say to yourself that hey, I did something for it, right? So break it down into these small right. observable parts. Yeah. Uh, and lastly, uh, overall, I think uh, the key to managing procrastination and you know being able to concentrate also well, I think, just to be very very compassionate, very very gentle with yourself. Okay. Now this does not mean that you right. have to be very lenient and you have no discipline at all. It doesn't mean that. It only means that do of not course. question your self worth when things don't work out. Okay. A lot of times things don't right. work out for so many reasons, okay? But it's important that you stay empathetic, you extend empathy, you extend compassion to yourself, just like you would for any other loved one, maybe your sibling, your parent, your friend, your partner, right? So just do that same for yourself as well. A lot of you are also therefore worried about, you know, deciding your career path and worried what right. if I make mistakes or, you know, I cannot turn back. Now it's very natural to worry about making career choices. It's, it's very, very, it's very, it's a very significant part of your lives, right? But again, it's important to remember that each of your journeys is going to look different, right? Some people may pursue a career they love, and then they discover that they love something else. Uh, some people may take a gap for a few years just to look after themselves, have some personal commitments, then come back, right? Some people may just start off late because they were maybe preparing for several exams and then it didn't work out and then they started right. late. So there can be so many different formats right. and so many variations. But, you know, because of the, because of families, because of peers, because of our teachers, the education system, the media... A lot of these factors make us think that there is only this one correct way to have a career, one correct path that is very linear, certain things to be achieved at a certain age. That's the best way to do it and no other way is okay. Yeah, But let again, let your self-worth not be dependent on how your career path is supposed to look according to a prescribed norm. Okay, correct. Just understand that it can be different for each one of you. It doesn't have to have to be same. the same yeah. for everyone, and it does not have to specifically be, be how you planned it. Like so many of us, like you said in the pandemic, we had plans of going abroad and give this exam, that exam, and now everything has come crumbling down, and we have to start from scratch, start our planning from scratch. So if we are so hard on ourselves to follow that one linear path, it's not going to work out that way. And, and none of this means that you are not good enough, that Correct. you are a failure, you right. are incompetent. It doesn't mean any of that. It's very important to remind yourself. Of that. I was so insightful, Sindhura. Thank you so much. I think I, more than anyone, learned so much from this video. It was like a one-hour therapy session for me. Uh, I really hope you guys uh, understood and took in everything that she had to say. And you all can actually apply this in your daily routines, which will just help you figure life better and glide through life easier thank you so much for uh, speaking to my audience today i'm so 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 happy to have you thanks is so there much any... for having me sorry. is there anything else you would like to uh, say to our viewers uh, despite all these uh, tricks or tips or whatever right. sometimes talking to friends trying everything that you know we may still feel overwhelmed Okay, we may still feel like I'm not able to handle this anxiety. I can't handle this right. depressed phases that I'm going through. And that's okay. Okay, so please reach out and seek help from a counselor or a psychologist. Okay, please visit a mental health professional if you feel like it is still very, very overwhelming for you. Okay, right. uh, so a counselor will provide you the safe place for you to share your worries. They will help you with skills, with tools, with techniques, with fresh perspectives. They'll give you the emotional support that you need in a very professional capacity right. uh, and sometimes you know friends families they may not be enough when it comes to of certain course. kinds of issues okay uh, now i call is is one such helpline uh, which provides uh, anonymous right. free and confidential counseling services so you can absolutely call i call also and i call also has this crowdsourced list of mental health professionals uh, which it has displayed on its website. So there's a whole list of so many uh, mental health professionals that you can actually consult also if you want to do that uh, in, uh, you know, not in a helpline format, but right. like a one-to-one -one therapy session. Right. 
uh, then you can do that as well. Uh, it's organized city wise, so you can find different professionals across different cities and their attributes and this information available on iCall's website. Okay, Perfect. but iCall itself, uh, the the counselors are all professional. They're all uh, they all hold a master's in counseling psychology or clinical psychology, and they're trained to deal with a range of issues. They are all quick, queer, affirmative. They're trained to be intersectional. They're trained to be feminist in their approach. Uh, they all come from a very psychosocially informed lens. So they're trained to deal with also crisis issues uh, of suicidality, of self-harm. So they're trained in a range of issues. So uh, please feel free to reach out to iCall. Uh, and please do seek help if you feel you can't do it alone. You don't have to do have it alone. To do it alone. Yeah, that is, I think, very important. We don't have to deal with everything alone. And I think I call service is very useful to an audience that uh, finds it difficult to actually visit a therapist and visit somebody in person. So I will make sure to leave all the details you need in the description box. So definitely check it out. Thank you so much, Sindura. And thank you, everyone, for watching. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. Love you.